That's a survival song. That's someone escaping um, a bad situation. You know, saw things so much clearer. Once you're in my rearview mirror, they're getting away. They're surviving. They didn't give in, and they're not gonna. They're not gonna do away with themselves. Drop the leash. Drop the leash. Get out of my f***ing face. <laughs> Pearl Jam Versus, released on Epic Records, was recorded between March and May of 1993 at the Sight Studios in California. Rehearsals for the album began in February of 93 at Potato Head Studios in Seattle before the band moved on to the Sight Studios in California to record their album. Vetter said of the recording location, I fucking hate it here. I've had a hard time. How do you make a rock record here? There were two firsts involved in the making of Verses. It was the first Pearl Jam album that drummer Dave Abruzis would be drumming on, and it was the first time for the band to work with producer Brendan O'Brien. There was a lot of pressure on the band to match the commercial success that they had had with their debut album, 10. The band was blown up pretty big and everything was pretty crazy, guitarist Mike McCready said. And with the follow-up to 10, Pearl Jam decided to take the approach of recording one song at a time and agreed with O'Brien to mix the songs as each one was finished. When, when you did uh, 10, the band had had very few live performances at that point going into the recording of that album. Uh, how do you think two years of, of touring affected the recording of verses? Uh, it took us less takes to uh, actually record the songs this time around. That was one huge thing. Uh, We're professionals now. I see. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Vetter. Uh, I mean, does it bring... <laughs> did you record the album live? Was it a, was it a uh, you know, actually going into this, to a, a room and setting up and playing, or was it... It was all one take, actually. We did many days where we'd play the whole album all the way through. Just... Every day we'd play the whole record all the way through, and then about 12 after about a dozen days... We picked the best day. We picked the best day. Really? It was a Wednesday, actually. <laughs> it was a Wednesday. Most of the songs on Verses were developed out of jam sessions, with guitarist Stone Gossard stating, I think we allowed things to develop in a more natural, band-orientated sort of way, rather than me bringing in a bunch of stuff that was already arranged. And you can definitely hear and feel that with the music on Versus. It has a much more free-flowing energy to it, which really lends to some awesome songs being created on that album. And Gossard added in a 2009 interview, Versus was probably where it felt better recording-wise. I saw how it could change and evolve, which gave me a lot of inspiration to go, we can do ballads, we can do fast stuff, we can do slow stuff, we can do punk stuff. The first week of recording produced the songs Go, Blood, Rats, and Leash before the band hit a slow spot. In order to keep up his intensity, Vetter traveled into San Francisco and began sleeping in his truck, as well as a sauna at the recording studio. Bassist Jeff Ament said, Recording verses, there was a lot more pressure on Ed, the whole follow-up. I thought we were playing so well as a band that it would take care of itself. He was having a hard time finishing up the songs, the pressure, and not being comfortable in such a nice place. Two songs, Whipping and Better Man, which were recorded during the Versus sessions, were left off the album, and would appear on Pearl Jam's next release, Vitalogy. Both songs made their live debuts in May of 93, where the band were premiering most of their newly recorded songs for Versus. But Vetter said the reason the song Better Man was left off of Verses was because he was not comfortable with the song's accessibility. I just, I wouldn't want any song to be just overplayed. But see, if they played like Blood over and over, I wouldn't mind that as much for some reason, you know. There's just more energy or anger. I, I relate to a song like that as much as even some of the slower ones, but... I'd, I'd rather listen to that one more. That's the one that I would put on more often. But as it is, you know, they'll play like a 
Tad song, and then I'll be listening to the radio, and then they'll play another cool Nirvana song or something, and then Soundgarden, and then they'll play our song. It'll be like uh, the small town song, you know, the slow one. It just makes me really mad. Because it's really not re that representative of the record, you know. Versus is 12 tracks of amazing Pearl Jam material, which is quite diverse in its nature. You've got your big hard hitters in there, such as Go, Animal, and Rearview Mirror, mixing with Pearl Jam's softer side on songs such as Daughter and Elderly Woman Behind the Counter in a Small Town. The album contains an amazing mix of songs, with four singles going on to be released from Versus, Go, Daughter, Animal, and Dissident. Versus debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 album chart and stayed there for an impressive five weeks. Astonishingly, the album sold 950,000 copies in its first five days of release, which set a record for the most copies of an album sold in its first week, a record that Versus would hold for the next five years. The album went on to sell over 7 million copies worldwide, certifying it seven times platinum, making it the band's second best-selling album behind 10. The album was of course released on CD and cassette, but initially Versus was given a vinyl release. Hi Jeff, hi Eddie. Hello. Hi. Hi, I was just wondering why you decided to release Versus on vinyl a week before you released it on the CD. Viva la vinyl. Uh, I think Do you have a record player, Cindy? Pardon? Do you have a record player? Yes, I do. Uh, do you, I mean, so you use it and stuff still? Yep. Because, I mean, not all records come out on vinyl anymore. A lot of stores don't carry vinyl anymore. And our, our first record didn't come out on vinyl, so I think that might have had something to do with actually being in a position to make sure that it came out on vinyl this time. And it sounds way better. If you A-B your CD player next to your record A -B player... A-B means you listen to one than the other. Oh, okay. And if, if, if you do that, you'll, you'll find that records sound a lot warmer and more human. They're, cool, they're cooler to hold in your hands, too. And they smell. They have a smell. If you go in an old used record store, it smells. <laughs> like books. Yeah. Where, where uh, The new record stores with just the CDs, they don't really smell. It smells like chemicals. They just stink. Yeah. You can see the album artwork a lot better, too, because it's Jesus. a lot bigger, you know. It's really because we're kind of busy with other things, and, and um, we're actually, we've been involved making some other music and even playing, so it takes time to do a video and to do one right and and uh, I mean I, I didn't think of no acceptance speech or anything I, I, that was probably obvious <laughs> but at the MTV Awards you know we won you know greatest video in the world or something and I should have really just said right then what I was feeling and that was like wow you know I, I guess we don't have to do any more of these because you know where do you go from there with the pressures that came behind the whirlwind success of their debut album, 10, Pearl Jam decided to scale it back when it came to promoting their new album, Versus. Hence, the band decided to not make music videos for any of the album singles. We've talked about how we don't, we don't want to be remembered uh, for our videos, you see? You are uh, also not going to be doing videos right away at least behind verses right you we just don't know uh, yeah. you know our mind is on music right now we'll yeah. record another record you know maybe even before we do that our mind is on music which is probably a really good thing for everybody Definitely. um you know uh, we'd, we'd love to uh, you know do things on mtv and just have it kind of be a different form of public access you know i don't have mtv <laughs> i don't i don't have cable the cover art for the album was a photograph taken by bassist jeff ament it was of an Angora goat from the Lifeline Farm in Victor, Montana. According to Ament, the cover was a representation of how the band felt at the time, with Ament stating, We were slaves. The album booklet contains additional drawings and writings by Vetter, including one page apparently doodled at a business meeting that says, I will never trust anybody again. The lyric page for the song, WMA, features a portion of a news story concerning Malice Green, who was a victim of police brutality. The album was originally going to be titled Five Against One, which comes from the lyrics in the song Animal. 
Well, tell me about the new album. What's the title? When's it coming out? What does it sound like? Uh, it's called Five Against One, and it's going to be out uh, October, I think. Sometime in October. First week of October, maybe. Yes. And does so, it sound uh, any different than 10? Yeah, a lot. Different, all different songs. Different songs. We're not repeating any sounds. songs. <laughs> a lot more together. <laughs> Is fun, Five Against One a basketball game. reference? Wasn't Ten like uh, Mookie no, Blaylock's number? No, 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 no. It's a, it's, so. a, it's a lyric in one of the songs called Animal. Are you worried about the sophomore slump at all? No. No. Uh -uh. You're energized. You're ready for Thursday. I'm waiting for the slump after that. Yeah, all that. that be the third more right. slump or something? <laughs> Vetter said of the new title, they were writing all these articles, our band against somebody else's band. What the hell are they talking about? You know, don't try to separate the powers that be. We're all in this together. But the last minute title change did create some issues when it came to the album's packaging. Some of the first pressings of the cassette still contain the title Five Against One printed on the cassette itself. And some of the first pressings of the cassette and the CD do not contain the album title printed on the artwork at all. And I, I believe there are actually uh, some cassettes. The initial cassette printings have the original title, which is Five Against One. Right. And then now the original CD pressings are untitled. And, and there'll be another title before uh, this record is done. <laughs> I think you've hit on a whole new deal here. You know, it's like change the title of the album about every two or three months. The songs on Verses tackle personal as well as social and political concerns. Vetter said that you write what comes to you, you try to reflect the mood of the songs. Daughter tells the story of a child who is abused by her parents because they do not understand her learning disability. Dissident tells the story of a woman who takes in a political fugitive. Leash was written about the same girl that the 10 song Why Go was written about. And the track Indifference, Vetter said, is about trying to do something to make some other people's lives better than they are, even if it means going through hell. Here, Eddie Vetter elaborates on the song Elderly Woman Behind the Counter in a Small Town. Oh no, it's, it could be any small town, it could be any old woman, and uh... Basically, the title comes from just being fed up with one-word titles. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly solved that problem on this one. No, I, I was just warming up one day when I started singing that. Just think if you were losing your memory and you kind of being seen on and you saw your old boyfriend from long, long ago and he was all hot driving a nice car and having a real family and you were stuck working in this small town. Small towns are fascinating. Like, do you try to get out? Do you, do you stay there and be a big fish in a small town? I, uh, you know, I think you should get out. In 2011, Pearl Jam released a remastered version of Versus, along with Vitalogy, in three formats. An expanded version, a three CD deluxe edition, and a limited edition collector's box set. So, Versus, Pearl Jam's second studio album, the follow-up to the massive debut of Ten. And this album, simply put, just totally awesome, very good songs. Right up there for me as being some of the best material that the band ever put out. A really cool album, totally different from Ten. With Versus, a lot of the songs did come out of jam sessions. They didn't just come in with fully completed songs, and you can totally tell that. A lot of the material was just made up on the spot, and you just got a totally free-flowing type of feel, type of energy to this album. 
very easy to listen to clocks in around 46 minutes in length you've got some really huge some big Pearl Jam songs from this album I mean the first three tracks Go Animal Daughter you've got Dissident in there and continuing on with the big name songs you got Rearview Mirror Elderly Woman but what about the grooves and the musical changes in a song in several of the songs but in a song particularly like Leash very good track from this album and the final track how amazingly awesome is that song indifference amazing vocals on this track by Vetter especially as the song progresses he sings amazingly on all of these tracks the hard and heavy tracks has his really grungy and gravelly voice here just totally at his best so yeah there's not much more to say about this album except it is an absolute Pearl Jam classic if for some reason you've never checked it out definitely check out this one very cool album from top to bottom